it's that time. We're back with more of the wonderful Global Nuggets on News You Can Use. We are so delighted to have a global phenomenon on the show with us today. She is none other than some zesty sizzling sauce for you today right here on News You Can Use with Dr. Lotus Roche and the remarkable pastor, Hillary Gooden. We have the amazing pleasure to have a young lady here all the way from Australia that is going to just blow your socks off. Why? Because she is one of the queens of leadership, leading the way all around the planet helping people just like you and me be the best we can be when it comes to leadership. Now, you know what I'm about to say. Go ahead, go ahead, get your notepad, get your pen, get your eyebrow pencil if you have to, to take these note nuggets and note nuggets because at the end of the day, you want to hear what Mireille to Lakima has to say. So come on in, come on in and tag a friend and get this news that you can use. And look, before I even go and get the co-host, pastor, the queen of the lymphatic bounce, Hillary Gooden, I think it's only right and only fair to give you 30 seconds to show and share that you care. Share this broadcast, tag somebody, start a watch party, but don't forget, run and tell somebody that we have got more news you can use. So I'm going to give you, your friends, and your foes, because who knows, 30 more seconds to share this broadcast before I go backstage and get Pastor Hillary Gooden. Tag, you're it. We've got 25 seconds, 25 seconds to come on in to news you can use. We've got one of the queens of leadership all the way from Australia. That's right, Mele Tulakima, the engineering hour phenomenon. Come on in and get in where you fit in. I bring in my co-host, Dr. Hillary. Ho, 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 woo! Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hello, 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 hey, Dr. everybody. Hillary, how yeah. are you? You know what? I'm we great. did this last week. We got on the same shirt. We both have our pearls. And guess what, y'all? We did not. This is not scripted. We did not script this. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So, hey, Dr. Hill, how yeah. are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. How the world are you today? If I was any better, it would be two of me telling two of you that Mare Tulakima is on the show. She is one of the queens of leadership in, to me. So I'm so happy to have her here. And I hope all of our viewers come on in and share and tag and like. But what else should they do when they come in, Dr. Hillary? Well, we want to make sure that you let us know where you're coming in from. So say a quick hello. Put your city and state in there. Rep represent say rep your city so we can shout you out as well. Yes. yes, 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 yes. I love it. All right. So now that I'm back in the view, we have news yeah. that you can use. I'd like to tell folks a little bit about our amazing guest. Miss Mare Tulakima is a leader. She's a leader in the field of leadership. She has an organization called Mare Tulakima Global Leadership where she's teaching people all over the world how to embrace and become better leaders than they already are. She has a show 
called the Greatness Engineering Show or Greatness Engineering Hour that she's been doing for quite some time. And I've had the pleasure to be on her show. And so tonight we get the amazing pleasure to have this amazing speaker, trainer, author, trailblazer, and show host right here today. So with no further ado, I'm going to bring to you the amazing, dynamic, magnificent, Mene Tulakima. Please welcome our guest. Woo -woo! Hey, hey, hey. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, such a pleasure to be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm really excited, really excited to share with your audience. It's just amazing. Awesome, so awesome. So we've introduced you in the little bit of space mm -hmm. that we had. But if we really told everything, mm -hmm. we'd be here to next year this time. But we want you, if you would... <laughs> you if you would tell our listening audience a bit more about who you are and how you continue to blaze trails all around the world to change the frequency on the planet yeah it's uh, like you said i mean if we, if i start to talk about everything will be here until tomorrow. Uh, so for those who don't know me, I'm Mireille Tulekima. I'm based in Perth in Australia, but uh, I can tell you I've worked, uh, you know, uh, all over the world. And when people ask me, where are you from? I'm like, okay, I'm originally from Africa, but I'm a citizen of the world. So that's what I am. I'm really a citizen of the world. So I was born in West Africa in a country called Gabon. Uh, and we are, uh, my first language is actually French because that's the language that we speak in, in Gabon. And uh, so I left Gabon uh, for to study in France. Um, at a young age, I was I was 14, so I went boarding, and uh, so since then I've not stopped, you know, uh, traveling, and you know, come up with you know my work that I do. I have a background in engineering, so nothing to do with communication of anything. But I'm the kind of person who always challenge herself. It's not about you know having the degree. It's about growing. It's about making sure that I'm learning. On, on the way wherever I am. So that's that's been my journey. I've learned through, um, through my journey. I've, you know, starting from being an engineer in the, in the oil and gas and energy sector to being a global leader, like, like you say. You know, I'm going to talk about global leadership uh, today, but it came up with, you know, failure, obviously, but, you know, having a vision. Uh, that you know, you, I wanted to follow, and and a passion for leadership as well, and a passion to make sure that people understand that they are they already have this greatness that they're looking for. It's just a matter of being conscious of it and unleashing it, you know, to the world, so that you know they can all, they can also contribute their you know their 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 craft or whatever they have whatever gift they have to the world and help other people to discover their own gift and step into their greatness and that's how you know i started uh, uh, the miracle my global leadership which is based on what i always call and you probably know it a lot is the greatness engineering philosophy and from that i started the greatness engineering a show where i bring people share uh, you know, their knowledge or share their story to inspire other people uh, to, uh, to, to, to learn from their, their mistake, to learn from what they've done well, and so that they can go to the next level of their greatness and become the best version of themselves. So it's not about comparing themselves to anybody, it's about them growing and becoming the best version because we know we are all unique and that's the most important thing that we need to, you know, to remember. So that's in a nutshell who I am. Uh, I have, you know, different, I, I work in different capacity, uh, I've, uh, I teach, I educate, I continue to consult in the oil and gas industry, but uh, I spend a lot of time really, you know, uh, pushing leadership 
especially helping women in those male-dominated environment to step into their own greatness and really, you know, make it really big instead of just, you know, being, you know, there for the numbers. So that's uh, that's really who I am in a nutshell. <laughs> Woo! So we want to give a shout out <laughs> to Gabon, West Africa, where you were born, because wow, mm -hmm. they, they <laughs> have shared with us a, a wonderful spiritual being having a human experience and thank you to your mom and dad to your husband and your children <laughs> for letting you take the time space to be here with us and we want to thank australia too because you live in mm -hmm. australia but you're here right in the us of a and global because there are people all around the world that's watching this broadcast and so mm -hmm. wow did she come in and drop the mic or did she come in and drop the mic i dare say Thanks. yes what you say here Awesome. So, you know, so, I was just thinking, she said that she said that's it in a nutshell. And I was thinking, that's a big nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's no ordinary Ooh. nut. That's a big nutshell. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And, and, and here's the thing the best is still yet to come. Because yeah. you're always that's doing something yet to come because so we I, I keep growing. I keep growing. Yes. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. And that was a mic drop. That was a mic drop. So as we get started, we're gonna put her in the hot seat, everybody. Um, so as we get ready to put her in the hot seat, before we do that, before we do that, we're gonna hear a word from one of our sponsors. Then we're gonna because this is gonna give you time to go ahead and tag your friends. It's going to give us time to go ahead and tag so because we know how to do it and we're going to do it. So we're going to go ahead and tag. But while we're tagging, while we're sharing, go ahead and tag your friends and tell them to come on in. And we've got about a little over 30 seconds to do it. Be right back. Hi, busy women leaders. I'm talking to you. Are you juggling your family? your business, your career, and your health? Afraid that if just one ball drops to the ground, everything could fall apart because everybody's looking at you. You're stressed and overwhelmed. You're looking for answers, for help that's real help, for solutions. I have Fiber Life Solutions that can help you. I am Hillary Gooden, the Fiber Life Coach, author, speaker, lymphologist, and pastor. I empower busy women leaders with strategies to reduce stress and anxiety while increasing energy, clarity of mind, better sleep, better health, and vitality. Oh yeah, and boost your immunity. If you are ready for that, you say, you know, I need that in my life right now. Let's connect. You can reach me at www.hillarygooden.com You can direct message me on Facebook or LinkedIn at Hillary Gooden or else if you would like to get on a free 20 minute strategy call a clarity call go to bit.ly forward slash Hillary Gooden that's bit.ly forward slash Hillary Gooden I absolutely believe you got the power to help your body help you live a more vibrant life. All right, all right, all right, all right. She it's absolutely time. believes that you I can help I yourself. Think. Help yourself. <laughs> So Sean Siegel from Ohio, great to see you. Angela <laughs> hey. Elton is here from DC. She says matching beauties. Yes, we are. Thank you so much. And so <laughs> we're gonna we're, we're we're gonna get right into it. And 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 said earlier that is a mic drop. And yes, it is. So keep sharing this broadcast. But we are about to get hot on the box and ask the first sizzling question of the night. And who? Is gonna put her in the hot seat. Hill. All right. So, uh, Moray, this is the first one. What inspired you to come to the show this evening to discuss this powerful topic? 
So, so like, you know, like I was saying in, you know, in my intro, I'm all about uh, making sure that people uh, become the best version of themselves. And uh, it's important for, for them to, it's important the first thing for me to share my story and to share my knowledge, because that's the way that I can give them some tools and some, you know, some inspiration as well, so that they understand that, you know, it, especially if they are challenged and it can be done. Yes, it's not easy, but listening to my, my story, listening to what I have to share, it may, it give them, you know, the, the, the confidence that they can make it. And I also wanted to be on stage with my sister, uh, you know, uh, Lotus, it's been a while, like, you know, uh, uh, I was saying, it's been more than a year now, you know, more than yes. a year that we've not been on stage together. And that's also what I, I really wanted to, you know, have this energy and, and share and interact. And because there's always, you know, something to learn on this on this show. There's always so many things that you guys are talking about. And it's important that I feed into it. And also, you you know, drop like drop my mic as well here and, and share, you know, all the knowledge and all the experience that I have, this global experience that uh, I've been, you know, privileged to have. Yeah, awesome. love it. You can mm -hmm. tell, she, you, you, you can tell she, she knows what to do. Look, yeah. I, I said take notes. <laughs> Note takers are money makers and note takers are change makers, but you'll never make any changes if you don't have the notes to go back to, mm -hmm. to implement them and put them in action. Because here's here's something that I know. Mede, you have been in some of the most dynamic rooms with some of the mm -hmm. most impressive and influential people on the planet when it comes to business, when it comes to oil and energy, when it comes to leadership. So we are humbled, humbled and thankful to have you here. I'm always, I always love to share a stage with you because I always learn something. So don't get it twisted, y'all. I'm, I'm taking notes. So, <laughs> so you should take notes too because she, she's got some golden nuggets. So I'm going to put you back. I'm going to keep you in the hot seat. Um, wow. Mm -hmm. Bill, what, 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 what did you think? I mean, she she wasn't even she's not you even know, sweating. What's I don't know, I don't know if you uh, if you heard what she said, but she said I came on here so I could drop my mic here, meaning she's been dropping her mic everywhere she goes. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and you know what? It's awesome <laughs> for her to drop her it. mic here on news yes. you could use, right? Yes. And what a powerful <laughs> mic it is. So, yes. what is a global leader in your opinion? So it's you know uh, leadership is uh, is defined you know by different different things and uh, like you said I like in your opinion because people have different a uh, notion of leadership but for me leadership start with being able to lead yourself first so that's the first thing that I I think it's important so being able to lead yourself and have a vision that will, you know, make sure that people follow you as well. So it's it's important as a leader, as especially as a global leader, that you understand uh, the cultural, be cultural intelligent, to be emotionally intelligent, and also understand how you come across. So it starts with you and understanding you know who you are how you come across what are the the strength that you have and then understand how you come across when you interact with other people so it's it's really a two-way relationship starting first with you and then you know when you you clear you have this clarity about yourself then you you can become a leader and lead people and have you know them to buy into your vision and the mission that you have willingly not you know something that you force on them not not something that they you, you're gonna tell them to do they're gonna come you know willingly and follow you and you all gonna create you know be able to create something positive for for everybody you know for the community for yourself for them everybody wins in in a leadership in a in a in a good leadership environment Awesome. So, so, Doc, so, um, Marie, I would like to know mm -hmm. how many mics do you have to drop tonight? 
because there you go. <laughs> <laughs> It's early, it's early in the morning where you are. You've just yes. woke it, woke it up. You awake. You ready? I'm <laughs> ready. Man, you and you know, and I know, you know, and and you know, as I as I tell people, we are we are unlimited. So I don't know how many mic I'm gonna drop. I'm just gonna drop as many as I can today. That's you know. <laughs> I love that. I love it. I love it. She's going to drop as many mics as she can drop. And look, That's y'all, right. she's not dropping no cheap mics. That's she right. dropping some well seasoned, um, just, just well, some robust mics. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so again, where she was born, Gabon. I, you know, I know you're proud. Australia. I know you're proud. So <laughs> they, they used to say uh, in, in these uh, social media streets, are you picking up what she's putting down? Hello. Are you mm-hmm. picking up what she's putting down? And for those of you that's just joining us, we want to welcome you to the show because uh, every day in every way, whenever we come on, we always bring amazing leaders in their own right. And tonight, just in case mm-hmm. you're just not tuning in, and for those of you that's hitting that replay, we have a phenomenal lady here all the way from Australia. The amazing Mireille Tulakima. She's a show host, she's a speaker, she's an author, she's a thought leader. She's a thought leader. If you've not heard that before, I'm saying it today. She's a thought leader and she's a mic dropper. And she's doing what she like and she's dropping all kinds of mic right here on News You Can Use. So welcome to the show. We're happy to have you here on the show. And so we're going to put her back in the hot seat uh, because we got another couple of questions for you. So let's talk about why it's important for people to understand global leadership and how it impacts us. Because you said some golden nuggets, okay? She, she came in with a golden neg- nugget and she talked about the leadership and then she came with the nuggets. The nuggets for that was like, yo, if you are a leader, not only should you be a great leader, not I didn't say good, I said great, but you also have to be the type of leader where you lead by example, where people follow you, where you're not bending them into submission mm-hmm. at your will. And that's a nugget, but that's a powerful nugget. Yeah. And so why is it so important for us to understand how global leadership works and how it impacts us? Because it really does. Mm-hmm. It, it really does. And especially especially right now. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to probably use a, a big thing that normally scare people is that we, we are in the fourth industrial revolution right now. So, yeah. It's it's impacting everybody. It's impacting everybody. We all connected. Even if you think that you're completely isolated, we all connected right now. And it's important to understand what other people are doing, who they are, what they stand for. And that's really what global leadership is all about, having this uh, intelligence on culture, having this intelligence on what people stand for, and having this intelligence of understanding people's values and mission and, and why they, you know, why they are, they are who they are. And, and, and that's, it has an impact. It, was, it has a, a, a global impact. And then even in the business, you know, arena now, we do business with people that sometimes we've never met. I mean, I've never actually met you, Lotus, but it, it looks like I know you for, you know, for years, you know, and yeah. uh, and that's what, you know, global leadership is all about. It's like you, you, you start, you know, uh, interacting with people who are not next to you, who are not in your immediate, you know, uh, community. And uh, and you get you get uncomfortable, and and global leadership is about you being comfortable. Yes, you have to be able to to lead even when you're not comfortable. That's what you know. That's the strength of a leader to understand that. Yes, I am in this environment. Yes, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I don't know everything, 
but I will continue to lead. I will continue to look, you know, uh, for for continue to pursue my 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 purpose. Continue to pursue my vision. I'm not going to do it alone. I need other people, you know. Yes, it starts with me. Yes, I have the right attitude, but at the at the same time, I need to interact with other people. I need to to get, you know, this rapport that will help us to go into the same direction. And so we impacted, we impacted whatever happening here. We've seen it with the pandemic, actually. You know, it started in China and now everybody's affected. So it's right. it's the same with everything. I mean, in, in you know, you look at the stock market, it's the same. If something is happening in the US, it's impacting everybody. I see it in the energy sector. Where you know, if the, uh, the the oil price is dropping, it's ac- it's actually affecting everybody in Africa in the in the village. So it's yes. it's an important you know uh, thing that we need to grasp. So we need to understand. We all global leaders now, and uh, whether you like it or not, you are a global leader, and you have to uh, get you know get up, stand up, keep running. And uh, and bring people with you because that's what it's all about. Because if nobody is following you, then I don't know. It's it's uh, it's a problem. I don't think it's leadership. So that's that's definitely you know something that impacting us every single day. Awesome, 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 awesome. awesome. So do you see why she's an award-winning speaker? Do you see why she's an award-winning author? Plain and simple. She came, she's seeing still, and she's dropping the mics. So, Hill, let's put her back in the hot seat. <laughs> All right. So, here we go. Uh, as the global leader, Marie, uh, as the global leader, please share the most important keys to successful leaders. Mm-hmm. So for me, and, and I think we will, uh, I didn't say it at the beginning, I kind of got forced to get into, you know, this global leadership in a way, because um, like I said, you know, I, I was born in Gabon and then um, at a certain point, at an early age, went to France. So when born in didn't know with a family that I didn't know. So I had to and lead myself, you know, understand the dynamic. And that's what I was talking about, understanding the dynamic, understanding of a culture, understanding what they stand for so that you can find your place. So it started at, at that level where, you know, I have to uh, reflect and understand what are the values that, you know, that are surrounded me and how can, you know, I, I, I can put, you know, a, a mission and a, and, and a purpose for me to be able to uh, to progress and to grow in that environment. So it started really at a, at a young age. And then a key moment as well in my life is when I lost my dad, which was, you know, I was still studying back then in France. And then I lost my dad. So my whole world just got shattered. I had to go back to Gabon. I had to stop, you know, uh, I was, you know, I had um, uh, ambition. Uh, in my, you know, uh, to to you know, go and do my master, and because I was doing my mash, bachelor, but I just had to stop and start being a leader and take a, dis- a big decision to go back and really, you know, enter the um, the, um, the 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 market, the the job market, so that I could sustain myself. So big decision like that got forced to me, and. At the beginning, you're shattered. You're like, why is all of this is happening to me? And uh, but you realize that it's actually part of the process for you to show your leadership, to step into this leadership that you already have that you don't know, and to run with it. And I think that's that where the roots where you know the leadership started. So the first thing that I, I would say is to. Um, to, to look at any adversity that you have and challenge as an opportunity for you to grow and an opportunity for you to break through to another 
thing and really clarity on what you where you want to be and what you want to accomplish because that's been really my uh, my, my my thing is to not look at what people want for me is especially as I was entering the uh, oil and gas industry, which were, which was a very male dominated, white Caucasian, well dominated environment back then when I started uh, 25 years ago. I had to really be strong in what I wanted. I had to be very strong in my vision because people start to judge you based on things that they see outside instead of really understanding what you stand for. So you have to be strong in your vision, strong in your mission. And when that happened and, and uh, with the persistent people kind of see that, yes, you are a leader and they start to, to trust you and that's how you, you you start to you know to to bring them in. So I think the the having this clear mission and leaving it whatever is happening around you is also a key success for a leader. And and the next I think that the, another key point is uh, being able to have people around you that can support you because obviously leadership is not just it's not about you. It's about a community, it's about a group, it's about a mastermind. So having this mastermind, or oh, you know, uh, I always, for me, I call them my board of advisors. Uh, they, they're not, you know, they, 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 people don't know them, but I know that I have a board of advisor that I can go to if I have, you know, a problem, financial problem. I know, okay, I can talk to this person. If I, I have a psychologist, you know, I'm, I'm not really well and, and it's emotional. I know that I can go to this person and she will, or she will, or he, he will do something for me to help me to, you know, to go over it. So. I have this, those board of directors that can really uh, stand by you when you're weak, stand by you when you're challenged, or when you don't see any uh, any issue in what you 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 know you are experiencing. So that's a key one as well. Don't try to do it on your own. Make sure you have people that you you can rely on that ha that are gonna help you in the process. And and you know people see me everywhere and every day they're like, oh Mira, it's such a great. But it's not just me. I mean they are you know there's there's a a, a, a tribe you know of people that actually help me also to position my shirt this way and uh, they might not get the reward from the outside but they, they are there and I know that I count on them so I think those are the key key thing and networking networking as a leader you have to network and you have to network and I, and I talk about it in in my book it's not just one way networking it's a free 360 networking and when i say 360 networking is you don't limit yourself to a certain uh, you know a certain community or a certain group you look at the whole spectrum you go around so it can be networking up which is networking with people who've done who've accomplished more than you it can be networking down with people who are actually still you know looking for for advices but that you can learn from because they they don't they're not um, already uh, they, they have a different way of, of seeing things so it helps you also in that way we're networking as well laterally, you know, left and right. People who are at the same level, but who have a different experience, for example, and who can bring, you know, uh, this experience to you and help you to to grow and 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 uh, and learn, you know, from them. And so, really looking at the full spectrum, networking outside your community, networking outside your race, networking outside your geography. And really have this, you know, and in, in, in global leadership, it's key. It's, it's going to help you to really, you know, become a great, great leader. You look at things from different angles. And then when it comes together, it's just so powerful. So I think those are the key things that has been really a strong aspect in my, you know, in my journey as, as a global leader. Wow. What do you have to say, Lotus? Wow. Dropping. Con <laughs> I'm continuing. I'm, I'm dropping. 
<laughs> right in my head. <laughs> oh, wow. That is so wonderful. You know, those are the points that you gave are, they, they apply to any type of leadership. You know, mm-hmm. whether you're a leader yes. at home, you're a leader in the corporate world, you're a leader in your own business, you know, a volunteer group or community group. It, it, it applies to all leadership. You know, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and and yeah, it's and 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 I think that's uh, that's the thing that sometimes people think is they just look at leadership as a title. It's not a title. We are all leader wherever we are. You know, we are leader without title, like uh, Robin yeah. Sharma said. We are leader without title. We can lead from where we are whatever you know situation we are in and and that's the most important thing so especially yeah. in this global global world where right. even if you 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 are in a remote area you are a leader and step into your leadership start leading you know yes mm-hmm. um and and you know i want to say this because i i remember I was talking to a gentleman and oftentimes in many of our jobs, especially women, especially women of color, sometimes we're passed over, even though we have the same credentials or even more in many cases as our white or our even African-American male counterparts. Mm -hmm. And what I learned, I was working for a job and I was really kind of leading without the title. And I had one Mm -hmm. of the gentlemen that worked for me. He said, you know, Miss Roche, you can lead from the back seat of the Cadillac. You don't have to be in the driver's seat behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. You can lead from anywhere uh, in a corporation. Because whether it's in your corporation, like Miss Hillary was saying, whether it's at home, your church, wherever, if you are a leader, you are a leader and you can lead from anywhere. You can lead from the choir by being a living example for what you do. And so I love how you put that um, to our viewers. And it's really important to make sure that you're looking at great leaders, not good leaders, great leaders, because great leaders are going to leave golden <laughs> nuggets that you need to pick up so that you can follow with the right information. And in addition <laughs> to that, not only will they leave golden nuggets, but they will reach out to help you if <laughs> you reach out to help them. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> what I'm saying <laughs> is you got to help them help you. Mm-hmm. You've got to exactly. be able to say, hey, I need help. Hey, I don't know. Because not knowing is okay. But knowing that you don't mm-hmm. know and staying ignorant and it's okay, that's not that's not acceptable. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wanted to touch base on something you said earlier. And then I'm going to take a, a comment. Well, let's do this first. Let's take a comment from, let's take a comment from our crowd. Um, but first, let's take a quick break. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and we're going to take this question from the crowd. We'll be right back. Health is wealth. And at Rucker Wellness, being healthy and wealthy is when you can live the healthy life that you want to while sharing a positive energy all around the world. Rugger Wellness advocates to empower people, not just in the experience of life, but also in your finances to enhance your stream of income. So come and be a part of our family that offers a unique opportunity with Rugger Wellness and Naturally Plus USA. All right, all right, all right. Hello, and we see Miss Phyllis coming in from Virginia. Happy to have you here. Happy to have you here. Please share, like, share, like, share, like, share, like, share. Uh, And I want to go right to this um, comment. 
Miss Angela says leaders mm -hmm. have many roles, a coach, a facilitator, a visionary, a change agent, decision maker, influencer, strategist, team player, delegator, listener, etc. So I want to kick the ball around first. I want to go to you first, Hill, and then we're going to come to our guest so she could have her say on that. And then we're going to put her right back in the hot seat with another comment. Hill? Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's a great comment because uh, a leader, <clears throat> a leader just naturally will flow into whatever is needed. That's right. what I found mm -hmm. into whatever is needed. I remember having an issue with one of my staff and I was talking to the CEO who's over me and she said, you know, he's going through a lot of things. He's a good guy. He's young. He's just learning. He's teachable. She said, you need to be like his auntie. I said, his auntie? <laughs> uh, what is, you know, what is, what is that fall into? But that was that being a listener too, you know, and getting to, to, to kind of know him and, and be human. You know, sometimes people look at leaders like they're not, they're above being approached. And we have to find that balance and still be approachable as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, that's I, what I, have I to agree. Say. Yep. Because sometimes yeah. we are approachable. It's, uh, people it's, are afraid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people mm -hmm. are afraid to approach us because right. we don't leave that air of approachability. Right. <laughs> right? We don't really? leave that open. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a great point, uh, Hillary. What what are your yeah. thoughts on that, Mede? Yeah, it's, it's a great point because as a leader, and uh, uh, I mentioned it before, is, you know, leadership is not about you. It's about, you know, the people that you lead and the people that you lead are different. So you need to be in a position position where you can navigate from one style to another. Some people, for some people, you're going to be a facilitator. For some people, you're going to be a coach. For some people, you're going to sit and just listen to what they have to do. And uh, at a certain point, you know, you are making the decision based on all of that. So a leader is really what, and, uh, you know, she's saying, uh, Angie is saying, it's really about you be, being adaptable open because it's about the rapport how you come across you know and and uh, that's what's going to bring people to you that's what's going to bring people to your to your vision to the mission or to the the project that you are leading you know and and that's that's an important step and and that's why i was you know i was uh, i was saying that it start actually with you and then you know with the, the the different skills that you have how you match it with the people that you interact with you know in, in you know when you lead and that's that's very important because otherwise it's it's if you're just a static one star leader you know it's it kind of difficult especially now you know people are just so different just looking at just at the gender issue I mean, if you're leading men and women, you don't lead them the same way. You have to understand, you know, what what's really resonate with them. Or race friends, you really have to understand how to come across, how to communicate to them so that they can go to the same direction. Because if you don't have the right communication, you know, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna match and, you know, you you can forget about leading them. So that's that's a very, very strong statement, yeah. Right. And so yeah. we, you kind of touched on don't be a static leader. So break that down mm -hmm. for, for our viewers, what you mean when you say that. So what I, what I mean when I, I say that is, you know, we, we've seen people who are so-called leader. They have their own view of things. They have their own way of doing things and they want to force it to people and they don't they don't actually grow. They just stay the same. But leadership in leadership, you grow, you grow because, like you said, you're not always right. And as a leader, you have to tell people when you're not right. I mean, that's part of leadership. You have to tell people when, you know, it's not, you don't, you, you don't have the skills. 
and that's what leadership is all about because you don't have the skill but you you are appealing or you are asking people who have the skill to come and and uh, and and close this gap so it's not it's not bad it's just you know you communicating and t- letting people know that you know i'm not there yet i need help or if you have the skills really you know uh, share these skills and help uh, uh, people in your in your group or in your in the people that are following you share this knowledge that you have so that they can also grow as well so it's a dynamic process leadership is really a dynamic process you grow in your leadership and if you don't grow if you stay static there's it, there is a problem <laughs> sure uh, there is a problem right i wanted to there is also, a problem yeah I also wanted to share this with you because you said so many things that resonate with Mm -hmm. me. And I wanted to say, leverage your role models, the leaders that you Mm -hmm. surround yourself with, but you also have to leverage your role. Mm -hmm. And Mare, you brought up a wonderful, Mm -hmm. um, a a wonderful comment you made is that just because we're leaders, we're not always right. Sure. And this mm-hmm. is where the leader can leverage their role by saying, listen, I'm not mm-hmm. sure about this, but this is what I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, this is where they lead by example. And this in exactly. and of itself becomes a teachable and a coachable moment while they are coaching That's you. Right. They're mm-hmm. also coaching themselves to be a better yeah. leader. And that is one, the essence of a true leader when they are really leading by example and they can be the first to say, you know what? I don't know. I am open. And if I made a mistake or if I did something that hurt you, I apologize. How can we move forward and really hear the person that is working with them or for them? Uh, and, that, and that's mm-hmm. powerful. That's really, really powerful yeah. for what mm-hmm. you have shared. And one thing that I wanted to uh, to I, I wanted to build on what Hilary said is the, this vulnerability, you know, as leader, because we always see leaders as strong leaders. They 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 are not allowed to show their emotion. No, you you can you know as a leader you can also you know uh, show this vulnerability, and because that's part that's part of the job as a leader. You know, you're not perfect you're not perfection sometimes you can be vulnerable and also receptive to the vulnerability of other people like you said you know be approachable and have some humility sometimes because you know it's important it's important because you're trying to communicate with somebody and communicating is coming together and that's that's an important thing and you know that's also a part of being adaptable too because a lot of times mm-hmm. as leaders, we're telling our, our people that we're leading, well, you can come and talk to me. I have an open door policy. But when they come, mm-hmm. oftentimes we don't want to hear them because we think that we're so right. Exactly. Or we think that we cannot be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. But yeah. hearing you say we must, it's essential for us to be vulnerable for us to really be the leader that we are are trying to be and this is in my opinion where we lead with love Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. we're taking Mm -hmm. a moment to appreciate who we are as leaders and to say i don't know everything and and i'm able to be vulnerable and i'm going to adapt to this situation Mm -hmm. where i must be vulnerable so that the the person who i'm supposed to be leading can talk to me. And here and here's what often happens. Mm-hmm. When the persons that we are leading come to us and we become adaptable, it allows them to also become the leader because they can also mm-hmm. lead us in such a way where we do become open and vulnerable to what is happening devoid of shutting them down. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I got from what you and Hillary said. And that to me is powerful. Yeah, exactly. So I, because, you know, as we know, lead, if you are a leader, you create leaders. You don't want to create followers. And it's, it's exactly because of that, you know, 
Yeah. You 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 lead, yes, but you it's it's a two way street, and and you on this being adaptable and being coached as well by the people that you lead, so that you know you create leadership and you you show really the leadership that that needed, and not just have followers. You do this, you do that. You, no, that's not what it's all about. Yeah. Woo! Triple yeah, my job. You know, she said uh, she was coming to do it. Yeah, we dropped it. Being 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 that leader, you never know what kind of situations are going to pop up. They have to be dealt with. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. whether it's with the employees or it's with projects. You know, missing deadlines or you know, you just yeah. or, or something comes in. Yeah. It's needed. It's due today. You know, you got to drop everything and and get everybody on board to get something done. And not always do people want to. Some sometimes you have to show them how you're changing, how you can adapt mm-hmm. to the day, to adapt to things. And uh, believe me, I went through a lot of that. I was learning mm-hmm. as I was going along, and they were learning as they were jumping in. And thank God they were jumping in with me, making those moves mm-hmm. that had to be made. So yeah, leadership can be tricky. It can be scary. Mm-hmm. It can be um, daunting. But yet, when you put all the pieces together, it's a great, it's a great mm-hmm. thing because it it not only affects you on the job. You take all of those same things into your life. Mm-hmm. You know, it leaves outside of the job and it and you can apply it anywhere. You know, it makes you a better person is what I'm trying to say overall. Mm-hmm. No, we lead every day. We lead every day. We lead in our relationships with our partners, with our relationship with our children, at at work, especially us women. We have so many plat- platforms where we need to be leaders and we lead. We, even if we think that we're not leaders, we are in a position of leadership and we have to step into this position and le- be great leaders because that's what it's all about. You're not gonna run away from it. You are into it. So just step into it and then keep going and become leader that you, you're you looking for. Yeah. Yes. Wow. That, this has been that's, a great that's discussion. Great. That's great stuff. I cannot believe, mm-hmm. I cannot believe we're almost at the top of the hour. I want to welcome yeah. each and every one oh of you. Oh my God. I, I know, right? <laughs> That is chiming in to the show. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We are just so wonderfully thankful to have our amazing guest, the remarkable show host of the Greatness Engineering Hour. She's a speaker. She's a award-winning speaker. She's won all types of awards that so many if, if I named them all, we'd be here till next Christmas. But, <laughs> and that's just true. Um, she is just an amazing person. And she's our guest tonight and your guest tonight, the wonderful Mireille Tulakima, all the way from Australia. She's an energy consultant. She's a woman empowerment advocate. She's an author. She's a talk show host. And what else can I say other than she's a mic dropper? Because y'all, she dropped some mics on the platform. And I want you, please, make sure you connect with her right down below. Make sure you connect with her. And so um, I want to go ahead and look at our guests. That I mean, our viewers, thank you for being here. I know Sean's here from Ohio. Please let us know where you're coming in from. Angela's here from Washington, D.C. She know how to come in the house. Thank you so much. And we have uh, Miss Phyllis coming in from VA. She know how to come in the house. Miss Tina is here. Let us know where you're coming in from, Miss Tina. And we have the remarkable Dorothy Mae Ross coming here all the way from Porsche Talk Live worldwide. That's right. Y'all know what it is. And she said, leaders show, not just tell. Mm-hmm. And Dorothy says, mm-hmm. leaders watch to see if change is needed and not just allow people to fit in where you no longer belong. 
That's oh, powerful. Mm -hmm. Because right how there. do you not, how do you That's know that you don't belong in that job or what have you if you don't have a leader that's able to decipher that where you're mm -hmm. at is not working or maybe you're doing an explosive job there but guess what now instead of being the shift supervisor i want to make you the 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 leader of everyone for Listen. every shift so mm -hmm. the leader really has to be able to pick up on that ladies what do you think about that and thanks miss darcy for saying that it's it's uh, it's powerful actually and uh, part of the leadership and and we've talked about it is you know to be the coach and the facilitator and the mentor in a way so as a coach and facilitator and mentor you should be in a position to advise people uh, on you know where they especially in their role if you know have a, a process to make them understand, you know, where where they are and where they want to be, and uh, and and match that and make sure that they reach this level, and and that's part of the leadership. That that's part of the leadership process that uh, you need to uh, you, you need to put in place, because I'll, I'll, and and that's why you are in a position of leadership because yes. as a leader you also develop people, and that's yes. it's part of it. You know. But but you know what just Absolutely. rocked me? You know what just rocked me? Did y'all hear her when she said this? And she's saying in these words, but this is what I heard you say. You gotta you gotta help them get get them. You know you gotta take them to that place. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what real leaders do. <laughs> they don't say I got mm -hmm. mine, you get yours, uh, right? right? And that's what I'm right. hearing you say, Mede. Don't be the leader that say, I got mine, you get yours. No, say, hey, look, come on. It's like um, uh, the staple singers, I'll take you there. Y'all know that? I'll take mm -hmm. you yeah, there. Yeah. Hey, right? Yeah. But you got to want to follow and you got to be committed to your commitment and let that leader help take you there. Murray, yeah. I, mm -hmm. you know what? I can't drop my <laughs> mic because it, it's pretty pricey, but I will drop the mouse too. She coming in, dropping mics, <laughs> dropping mics, everything. Wow. So thank you, um, uh, Miss Dorothy. Thank you for that. And um, of course, Angela said, congratulations on all your accolades. Uh, and go to her page because she's phenomenal. So Miss Phyllis said, thank you so much. We need workshops to start grooming young women to be leaders and entrepreneurs. Ha! Okay. You're calling yeah. us to task. All right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anybody want to respond to that? I agree. <laughs> I uh, yeah, agree. it's 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 an important it's it's an important process, and that's you know, especially if you have an ex and that's what we're doing. We have a, a platform where we share this experience. We yeah. share what works. We share what's you know the limitation. And we, we have to share it with the, with the next generation, especially us women, women of color. We need this yeah. knowledge. We need this knowledge and we need to see role models. So yeah. if there's no role models, we have to position ourselves. We have to be visible so that this next generation see that they can do it. It's not, a, it's, it's yeah. not easy, but it's feasible. They can do it with determination, the knowledge, with learning from the mistake that we are have made and so that they can go to the into leadership the leadership that they were, they were born with and not just quiet it and then follow what people want them to follow they are born leaders they have yeah, to yeah. step into this 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 leadership and we have to help them it's our duty and so i want to That's share brilliant. this with you because this is just one of the things that she's doing uh with uh mr anjef and uh dr sharmila uh she she's holding master classes how to make your business startup investment ready so so there are master classes that she's already doing there's things that myself and other folks that are putting together and i guess we need to look at something we can do to help together hold a conference and of course uh let me take this off because it's on it was on her face we don't want to have nothing on her face right um 
we we uh, have the wonderful pleasure with Women Reach Out with God Initiative. Rogi, we've been on panels helping young people, putting the word out. So uh, for those of you that's asking for us to do this, uh, of course, my door is open and we'll look into doing something. Make your suggestions. Tell us what you would like to see us do um, to make this dream a reality because Miss Weaver, you are spot on. You are spot on. And uh, there, there are two of my friends right there that I just showed. Um, they are, they're phenomenal with what they do. They're phenomenal all the way out of India. They're phenomenal. And so just let us know because we're open. And I want to say hi to Karen Shimazu all the way from Hawaii. Great to have you here. And one last comment that we're gonna take because we don't want to keep we don't want to keep Miss Marie too long. She got up an early early morning to make sure it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's just an important conversation, really. <laughs> woo woo! I love it. I love it. And, right. and uh, Miss Karen from Hawaii says thanks for your golden nuggets. So let's take this next question. Hill, go ahead, please, or comment. Dorothy Ro Dorothy Ross says. Many people leave jobs and careers because they're in group A or group B or group C is where they belong. Mm -hmm. To begin, there does not mean, uh, to begin, there does not mean they stay there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes we're, we're stuck in group, like she said, stuck in group A and B when we really should have been in group C. And sometimes right. if the job, if the leaders on that job are not uh, giving you that um, promotion or whatever it's going to take to put you in group C, right. you know, a person, when they feel stagnant on the job, like they're not growing, they're just, they could come to, to work with their eyes closed and do their job. That can be very boring and it can make you want to not be there. Right, right. When they're not recognizing that. Yeah. The yeah, leaders, right. well, the leaders are not recognizing that, right? And, mm -hmm. and it's a level of discernment as a leader. But here's here's the thing, though, that I've recognized many years ago. A lot of times, leaders in certain positions that, especially that have been grandfathered in, where the people who mm -hmm. used to train may have died out, so they may, may not still be getting that training, or even in this new age of leadership, yeah. they may not have gotten the training to be able to decipher if you're mm -hmm. in the wrong place at the wrong time, or you might be in the right place at the right time. I, I'm a disc assessment certified trainer, and so people like myself, Marae, uh, Pastor Hillary, and many of you that's watching, we can look and say, no, you're not in the right place. But sometimes it takes time to know that. So that's another thing. How do you know when you're a leader and you know that you need to learn a little more so you can continue to lead the people so you yourself as a leader can identify if the person is in the right job set if the person is in the right organization, because this isn't just about jobs. You know, this is about right. organizations that we're a part of. It's about companies that we uh, run or are a part of. It's about families. It's about churches that yes. we're a part of. Look, Deacon, Absolutely. Deacon, Deacon, you don't need to be on the Deacon board no more. You need to yeah. be in the choir, you know? You know, I, that's just like uh, they had greeters at a church, you know, they greet you at the greet visitors to come in through the door. And I came through and it looked like there's people, they were um, saying hello, giving hugs to everybody as they, as they came in. When I came through, they were talking to each other and I saw what they were doing. So I was kind of, I was feeling down that day and I was kind of looking forward to my hug, you know? And yes. when I came in, it's like they both at the same time turn to each other and start talking. And I, I, walk, I kind of slowed down just in case and I didn't get it. And th that kind of stuff can affect a person, you know, yeah. you affect the people that are coming in and the pastor don't know this is happening, you know? Right. So it, it could be a detriment when people are in the room. Maybe they didn't need to be greeters. You know, if you're not going to greet everybody or you get somebody that's all grumpy, and they don't want to be at the door. They rather 
be doing something else in the church. You have to recognize those things and make sure people are in the proper place where they can thrive. Right, right. And sometimes this is something that, Mere, you talked about earlier. You know, we have to reach beyond our comfortable circle. And, I, and, 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 and we talk about this often. We have to go global. It has to be a mindset that it's okay to go outside of your comfort zone and not just in a global way, but right in your own environment. Because I, I, I would imagine, you know, what they would say, the, the greeters, if we had gone up to them and say, why you didn't give Miss Hillary a hug? And maybe they would say, oh, I, I didn't see her. Or, oh, but they probably saw you. Oh, we don't know her. We don't know yeah. her. Yeah. We're not sure. And, and see that, a lot of times makes a difference in how we engage with people. But here's the thing. I didn't know Mare two years ago, right? Because mm -hmm. we've probably been knowing each other for two years. I didn't know her, but I saw the value that she was bringing to the world. And I got to tell you, I fell in love with her. <laughs> she is, I mean, just in private conversations and on global stages, she is just the sweetest person you ever want to know. And so I want to take this comment from Oren Harris. How you doing, my brother Oren Harris? Great to see you. CEO of Constant Dons, great to see you. He says, leaders do more than just, hold on, I'm going to do one thing because I don't like this on your face. Okay, there we go. There we go. Leaders do more than just delegate. They inform, teach, guide, but more importantly, they listen to the needs of the people. Yeah. They see things that others may lack and true leaders invest with their time, resources, and knowledge to help the other person, in this case, women better. We mm -hmm. all, in a sense, have the ability to lead, but not everyone has the ability to inspire. Ladies, we're in the hot seat. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whoa. Harris. Woo! And, and I want to say, and I want to say, because I saw, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say, if I didn't show this, Miss Miss uh, Phyllis had shared this. When you are getting the results you want and need, she said, and she saw that happen before, <coughs> um, and it happened to her before where she didn't get the hug or whatever. But when we talk about need, Mr. Harris talked about need. Let's talk about it, ladies. We are in the hot seat. Let's go. <laughs> we are in the room. It's, it's just beautiful and true because, and, and that's sometimes the part of leadership that we forget, the inspiring part. You have to inspire as a leader because that's really the key thing that uh, that drives leadership you have to inspire people because you 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 know and it comes down to being a role model yourself being you know showing showing the example before people can can follow you so the inspiring part is really what's drive drive you know uh, people to follow you to follow what you do to follow uh, your vision to help you and and really die for uh, following you and 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 making sure that your uh, the mission is is accomplished. I love it. I really love what uh, uh, what Aaron Harris just said. It's about inspiration. If you can't inspire, you, it's it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, here here is something else. Well, Miss Hillary, you want to make a comment to that first. And then we're going to look at something that one of our viewers shared, which is a, a, another another thing. They, they, they y'all putting us in the hot seat tonight. <laughs> and thank you, Mare, for sticking around. Uh, and and she's someone said no, it's, so, it's just so hard, you know. know. <laughs> yes. This. The seat is really hot, so I can't move. It's it's <laughs> we're dropping, and then it, and then the. the you are also dropping, so how can you yes. know? How can you leave? What? Our viewers, they might everywhere. Yes, <laughs> they are rocking it tonight. Yeah. I'm telling you, 
<laughs> inspire <laughs> to aspire. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So hell, what inspire do you have to, to aspire. Yeah. yeah. What do you, you have know. to say to what Orin said? And then we're going to jump down to Miss Phyllis. And then we're going to go right to Miss Elting. Uh, you know, I don't know if we're going to wrap up there, y'all. But look, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Because guess what? We've got somebody on the show tonight. They can handle the hot seat. This is, look. <laughs> hey, Miss Malay, oh she can handle God. it. All right. Oh my God. So what? <laughs> what? <laughs> This what do you have to say, Pastor Hillary? It's it's yeah. burning. It's burning now. <laughs> now it's burning. <laughs> oh wow, wow! Well, you know, um, learning to lead is one thing, and it is so true. Learning and being able to inspire is a whole different thing. Just, um, I it's just from my own example, from my own experience. You know, I was learning and I was learning a lot of stuff, but then I saw the need that I had to not only lead the people that was working with me, but I needed to inspire them. You know, there were times when I would say, you know what, today I'm treating everybody for lunch. They never knew when that would come up, you know, but that's something I did because it gave us time to sit together and just talk. We don't have to talk about work, just talk about what, you know, and, um, those kind of things cause us to be closer, cause them to do things and not uh, fight against uh, things that they needed to do or things that I expected them to do, you know, and uh, just finding ways to inspire people. I mean, I had hula hoops in my office. I, I would come up with these crazy questions and I walk out like uh, one time I remember uh, walking out and I said, everybody, come here, come here. Um, I said, you all work so hard. You just work so hard. Let's just stop and give the brain a, a little, uh, you know, exercise or a little freedom here. I said, so have you ever thought about how we breathe in the same air that the cavemen breathe? They was like, Miss Hillary, who comes up with questions like this? You know, just stopping to to engage as a as a team outside of. Just work and 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 so hard. And that, that's what they did. You know, even when I would go on vacation, they would tell me when I got back. The other staff thought, did she check in on y'all every day? Or did she give y'all some kind of whip? Y'all just working and she ain't even here. It's like we're doing our job. Because I always ask them, well, only thing I expected of them, do your best. You know when you've done your best. And even when I wasn't there, they were still doing their best. So it, it takes getting to know those that you're working with. I'm done. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted I to add something, especially on the investment, you know, investing time. Because sometimes we think that leadership is just sitting down. And no, we have to invest time to talk to people that we're leading, understand their need like it was beautifully stated in this uh, in this quote and invest this time to understand what they really need what they stand for because it's going to help us to lead them where they they need to be because and and the listening part sometimes as leader we don't need to to talk we don't need to be the person talking let's listen to what people tell us let's listen to what they really need and then act on it and that's uh, that's an important thing that is always left out in leadership the investment we need to invest time i still remember when i was working uh, i was working back then in south africa in in uh, in you know i, I was uh, working for a company in south africa there was so much need for people to talk so as part of not only on my technical job i had to invest time to sit down with people to organize things out of the office to understand you know their uh, why? Because at some point there was so much tension, especially racial tension. So I had to understand, sit down with each one of them to understand where they stand, what were their, their, their roadblock, and try to bring people together. It was a lot of time that I had to invest. So the in, time invest, invested is important as a leader. Wow. 
So we've got another comment. I want to take this comment from Dorothy May Ross. Um, oh, first, let's go to Phyllis's comment. Phyllis said, you lose clients, people are in a position that doesn't fit, right? So when you have people in a position, like you were talking about, don't put the person that should be, you know, on the fry rack up front because they don't want to talk to people up front if you're in McDonald's, right? Mm -hmm. They want to be on the fries because your fries going to be crispy and I'm not advocating for mm -hmm. McDonald's because I don't even eat there. But this is, you know, I'm just giving a, like, a just scenario. <laughs> if I got a person that loves to make fries and always put the right amount of salt on them fries, it's never too salty, it's never under salty, but then I take that person and I take them off the fries and we always get people that come back like 50 times for fries and I put them on the counter, but I don't ask them, do you know how to make change? That's why they have cash registers now that make change. But but I don't ask them. I don't ask them, would you like to be up there dealing with 50 million people a day? Guess what? They going to get pretty salty and they may quit and the service that they give across the counter may suffer and we may lose people from coming in because you know what they're going to say because they can see you they can see your job <laughs> even though they don't talk to you they're going to say ralph aren't you the fry guy why are you up here yeah and ralph is upset because he don't want to be mm -hmm. up front but great leaders we're going to ask people so we make sure we put them in the right spot because we will lose business in our business. Mm -hmm. I, I've had it happen to me, uh, companies I work for, even mm -hmm. my own company. So I know that is a critical, critical statement that she just made. Ladies, what do y'all have to say about it? Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's critical. And sometimes we don't see the result of bad leadership before we, you know, we, it, it comes up in the number because if you're not satisfied with where you are, your productivity is going to drop. And I don't know how you evaluate that in some business. It, businesses, it's easy to identify it, but in some some other businesses, you will identify it year, you know. And by the time you you realize it, you know, you 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 lose everything. So it's important to have you know this time to understand where your team, you know, understand your team members and where they fit. They shouldn't be. No, it's it's really important in business. Miss Hill, mm -hmm. you got anything before we go to? I think yeah, our final like, um, comment of the night. Yeah, that's like being in a, a store and you're at the cash register, and the cash uh, person at the door at the uh, cash register is complaining to you about their job. Yeah, and going on and on and on, and you, as you a customer, you just want to get in, get out. You want mm -hmm. them to say thank you, so you can say you're welcome. I don't need to hear all of this stuff, you know. <laughs> and and uh, sometimes I don't know. It, that that's one. That's another situation when people are dissatisfied, whether it's about being on the cash register or whatever happened, you know, between whatever happened on the job. And they take it out on the customer, and the yes. customers don't want to hear it. You know, so it's, it's, it's something where you have to find out. Hopefully, find out who that person is and talk to them. Try to have a conversation with them to clear that matter up. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff right there. Yeah, that's good stuff. Oh, that's good stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So look. We're going to take a quick break, folks, and we're going to come back and we're going to take we, we, we first of all, I want to say thank you, Burn, uh, thank you. To, 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 to everybody that's chiming in tonight. Y'all y'all making us work hard for the money, honey. Y'all making us work for it. So uh, with that being said, I want to say thank you to Angie. She said burn, baby, burn, because guess what? Yes. Yes, she is. She is on Good. fire. And we're going to take this question when we come back from Dorothy May Ross. Uh, this comment, Dorothy says, leaders become watchers that sees things that others miss. 
A leader causes changes and create other leaders and a leader steps in to help the people grow when others walk away. Yeah. Walk Absolutely. away. Absolutely. That is powerful. That is powerful. And here's, and here's something else that leaders do. When a leader sees that you have someone that you're leading, or even if it's a, a, a client, they'll step in and they'll say, hey, let me tell you what you can do to help lead that person or uh, to keep that client or to, to, to really give what's needed. Yeah. That's some great golden nuggets. Yeah. That is some great golden nuggets. So we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. Thank you for watching the show and be sure to follow us on Instagram, like and share and let us know that you care. Also, let us know what other type of shows you'd like us to present just for you. Thank you. Yes, yes, invest that time, baby. Well. Invest that time. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. what, is, ladies? What do you have to say about this? Uh, I have, I have a, you know, I have a, a comment to make. Um, Sometimes leadership, working away, is actually part of leadership. You know, you don't have to take all the challenge up front. Sometimes the option for you as a leader is to walk away. You know, uh, even when you lead people, there are people that you can't communicate with. And the only way to uh, to make an impact is to walk away. And, and, and I think it's not that and really understand what's best, you know, for, uh, for team and what's best for you know the the mission or the purpose that you're trying to that you you really want to to uh, to go to go uh, to to accomplish and i think walking away is an option in leadership it's not um, it's not always you know the option but it's an option when you've tried everything and uh, and you it's actually a way to make an impact in certain situation to say okay i can walk away or even when there's a succession issue when you yeah. realize that you don't have the skills anymore you can say okay i walk away to get somebody take on this task or take on this this project and then i walk away so that can be a strong leadership point that that's an excellent strong leadership point because here's something i learned especially when i was in the military as a leader mm -hmm. we had to know when to get out of someone else's face because when you're when you're in the military a lot of times you're up mm -hmm. close and personal but sometimes when you're in that person's proxemics for too long you can overstay your mm -hmm. welcome <laughs> and you'll get your booty handed to you. You got to mm -hmm. learn when to retreat, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like Sun Tzu talks about the art of war. You, we got to know when to retreat. And great mm -hmm. leaders, not good leaders, mm -hmm. not good leaders, great leaders know when to disengage. And yeah. sometimes, here's another caveat. Even in business, sometimes mm -hmm. you have to step away from from persons that you're doing business with if it's not going to be conducive to them or mm -hmm. to you for you to remain to you yeah so so that's a fantastic point i i i appreciate that point that uh dorothy made but yet here you go again Th this is why she's the greatness engineer right because this is a part mm -hmm. of me great leader stepping into your greatness knowing mm -hmm. also when to disengage and here's the thing some of it's us dangerous. feel bad because we step away so let's kick that mm -hmm. ball around a few minutes hillary have you ever been in a situation because you're a leader you work 
uh, for many, many years in a corporation where you led people. Have you ever had a moment where you just had to say, you know what, let me step back and let me breathe? Have you ever had Definitely, because there was a, a very hard time that the organization was going through financially. And people thought, I don't know, somehow they thought I had all the money in my pockets or something. <laughs> and uh, so people were being furloughed and different mm -hmm. things like that. I understood how difficult it was. I was going through the same thing. Right. And uh, sometimes I had people to get in my face and I don't, I really don't like that kind of confrontation. I, I'm not that person. And so I, and I, I'm going to stay calm. And one of the manager that worked uh, with me, she was the manager of the office. She said, "Miss Hillary, I don't see how you do it." She said, "I just don't see." She said, "It makes me want to get right back in their face and go hollering and caring." I said, "No, you got to learn." And and over time, I saw her develop that being able to stay calm in heated situations yeah. because she was watching me. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah, I've I've had to walk mm -hmm. away. And I've had to uh, slam a few doors in people's faces at times <laughs> to get a point across. You know, because they think well, Miss Hillary is so nice. She's so nice, and you, right, then you right. so then you think you can just get in my face that way. No, I'm nice, but I'm no punk either. Right? You don't know. get it twisted. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't you know? get your feelings yeah. hurt. Come on. <laughs> don't get your feelings hurt they forget again they forget mm -hmm. you're human you know yeah. you're human just like they are right right yeah. right right wow mm -hmm. that that's mm -hmm. good that's some good stuff that's some good stuff right there so look folks mm -hmm. we are going to take a quick a quick pause for the calls a quick <laughs> pause, pause for the calls and we'll be right, right. we'll be it's right burning so much more <laughs> Yeah, let me see. Let me see if we can much more calls for the pause a, or a pause <laughs> a pause a pause uh, for the calls. So hold call. on. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Monday and Friday, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, where we're introducing health and wellness experts from around the world. I'm your co-host, Hillary Goodman, and our phenomenal host is Dr. Lotus Richet. Experience the best information and live your best life. Thank you for joining me with our remarkable guest, Marie Tulekina. All, All right, right, we are right. back. <laughs> and we are super happy to have each and every one of you here. Thank you so much for joining the show. Um, and, and I just wanna put these things up as uh, we get ready to close the broadcast. Tina Ezel said, yes, you have to know when to draw back and when to get close. God will give wisdom. Woo! Thank you. Thank you for that. Because I think that's the level of discernment, ladies. What, what do you all think? Yeah, exactly. God, God will let you know. The spirit, that unction in you will let you know. Oh, uh, say look again. In, um, the look in their eyes. <laughs> you say, you know what? Yes. I'm going to step back. <laughs> 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 so, um, and, and, and saying what God will give us, I, I ask each and every one of you, go ahead, uh, be a proud supporter of the show because it gives us the opportunity mm -hmm. to bring wonderful guests like this on our show. Mireille Tulakima, she is phenomenal. She's coming here and she has dropped 
the yeah. mic. Several mics. Multiple. She <laughs> drops <laughs> <several laughs> mic. Yeah. So if you would go ahead and support our show, you can connect with us on Cash App, PayPal, Zelle. Connect with us as we continue to bring these phenomenal speakers to the show. So also, for those of you that's just joining us tonight, tonight's topic is global leadership. And I got to tell you, Miss Mireille Tulakima is top notch, top level, a global leader in her own right. She's won a myriad of awards all around the world. And we're humbly honored to have her here tonight on News You Can Use. And so with that being said, we're going to take a moment to look at one more comment. We want to do that from Miss Phyllis Weaver. She said, ladies, this has been a fabulous conversation. I have to go now. Sabat <laughs> Shalom. Sabat Shalom to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Thank you for being Thank here. You for being here, yes. Awesome. Awesome. So at this juncture, we usually do something called words of wisdom as we begin to close the show. So usually Hillary and I, we'd be like, all right, who going to do it? All right, you know, let her, oh. so, but tonight, <laughs> but tonight, we going to leverage, we gonna leverage our role model that's here tonight and we going to leverage mm-hmm. our role. So with no further ado, Hillary, yeah. Uh, let's go right to Miss Marie Tulakima. All right, for our final words. Oh, oh. <laughs> we love it for Marie. So this, yeah, this has been fun. Thank you so much, Lotus and Hilary. It has been amazing. I don't want even to leave, you know, but we have to stop you know dropping to things. Uh, and and I like this, you know, I like this setting, and we and you know, it's it's amazing. I've been able to for a lot of people, and the, the audience have been really, really, you know, impactful in the conversation, which is fantastic. But what I want to leave the audience with, you know, if related to the global uh, um, global leadership, is whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, you are a global leader. So accept this status and step into your global leadership. So what does it mean? It means that you have to come out. It means that you have to uh, embrace the different roles that we've, we've discussed today, being a coach, being a facilitator, being a networker, being a listener, listening to people around you, your needs, being adaptable, and uh, and inspiring because that's the key thing inspiring and investing time to be a great leader to anybody around you it can be for you know a great leader to your family a great leader to your team a great leader to your business partners a great leader to your to your spouse anything you are always in a position of leadership and understand that this leadership is at your death, at your, your doorsteps and you can't run away from it and now you are leading you know you are leading in the world and the world is listening to you you have this stage and uh, and it's all global you can make an impact so it starts with you understanding that you can make an impact you can make an impact in your community you can make an impact globally and uh, we've been you know we we've, we've traveled this road myself and i know lotus also travels this road where we've been uncomfortable to step into this 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 uh, leadership so we started with baby step started to with being leaders in our community started with being leaders you know and then next leader in our country and then by the time we realize we are global leaders so understand that you know if you are afraid of taking the big step, you can always take baby step, and it's gonna it's gonna lead you there. So it's an important thing to to know. You are the global leader that you're looking for. So step into this global leadership position and step into your greatness because that's really what what is all about here. You can't shy away from it. That's that's too late. It's there. Take it. Embrace it. And uh, and run with it. Awesome! I love that. I love that. Wow! Again, 
you can make an impact. You can you can do anything that you put your mind to do. It's just all about stepping up to the plate and doing it. And so I would like to invite each and every one of you, please go here, go to Amazon, get this awesome book by Mireille Tulakima. And I'm copying this for you now. Get this book, Stepping Into Your Greatness. 12 rules for building an outstanding life. It's very affordable. And that is only one of her books. So connect with her on Facebook and just follow her. Because if you follow her, you will continue to be on the road to greatness. And if you look right in your side of the chat, guess what? The link is there for you to go ahead and order her book. Grab her book. Mm -hmm. You will not be disappointed. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, I can feel the, you know, the fire. <laughs> <laughs> so that is just a, a bit of my words of wisdom because here's what you said. They can make an impact. And that's unequivocal. So with that being said, we want to have the queen of the lymphatic bounce come on down and make her impact with her words of wisdom. Dr. Hillary Good. Wow. <clears throat> this has been an awesome, powerful, impactful, uh, thought-provoking discussion tonight. And we feel like, wow, we could go on, but we must stop. But you know what? Just like uh, Murray was saying in the beginning, it's already within you. You got the power. You got the power to transform into that leader that God has for you to be. Where right where you are, you can start right where you are. First of all, by leading yourself, <laughs> leading yourself into that way that's already made for you. You know, and, and I would say, seek the Lord. He will help you, you know. And as you go, you grow, but you never stop learning. You never stop learning. There's always more to know, always more to learn. Uh, get Having a mentor, a coach, someone that can lead you in the way that they came because you're coming along that same path. Don't be afraid to reach out. You know, but you make you can make a difference right where you are. You don't have to start tomorrow to, you know, you can start to now. <laughs> make Ooh. it now. And uh, and let's do this because there's so much that's needed for all of us to do our part in making that global shift, a global impact as leaders. That's it. Wow. Wait a minute! You just came up in here and you done dropped the mic, and you you I, look. This is a new saying that Dr. Hillary just came up with. You can start to now. Don't <laughs> wait right. till tomorrow. Start to now, because if you start to now, you may change somebody's tomorrow. That's oh, some good juice right that's there. Juice. <laughs> that's good juice. I, I hope I hope y'all wrote that down. I hope y'all wrote that down. And so my words of wisdom as we head out is follow what they said. <laughs> if you do a third of what was shared here tonight, it's unequivocal that you are going to be successful. The first thing I said coming on, is note takers are money makers and note takers are change makers. Then I put up, I led by example, take notes, take notes, replay this, share this with somebody, right? Replay this. And don't forget, you have to have 360 degrees of networking, be adaptable, lead with love. And, and like Mene said, don't be a static leader, but you got to be vulnerable and know that Leaders create leaders. And look, women all over the world, we need you to stand up for every little girl because women need to be leaders too. And I want to thank you to all of our viewers that 
have really seeded into us. Because see, we're leaders, but we're also learning from you because you're leaders too. Because we've invested time tonight. And that's what great leaders do. Invest time not only in yourself, but also in the mission and in the movement of someone else. Because you are a global leader. All you have to do is embrace your role because you've got the power. You've got the power. But don't wait to start tomorrow. You can start to now. So with that being said, thank you. I appreciate everything that we have shared tonight. It's just been incredible. It's been phenomenal. And for those of you that's just jumping on, please make sure you come back, you visit us, you stay connected. And we're going to bring Malay Tulakima back to the show. We got to have her back on the show because the more you know, the more you grow. So with that being said, until we meet again, have a wonderful day, have a wonderful life and move into action. Start to now. Thank you, Mare. We appreciate you. And sending you love. Welcome. Fantastic. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. We love you guys, and we appreciate you. So have a great day, great night, great life. Take care. Yes, the phenomenal Mere Tulekima, all the way from Perth, Australia. Thank you to our amazing guests. We appreciate you. Thank you for your wonderful words of wisdom all around the world. Join us for news you can use every Monday and Friday, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, where we're introducing health and wellness experts from around the world. I'm your co-host, Hillary Goodman, and our phenomenal host is Dr. Lotus Richet. Experience the best information and live your best life. Thank you again. We'll see you on Monday for more news you can use.